I'll tell you what happened. Here's my wife. I come home with tears in my eyes. Two days. This is about 1980. Two days before the race, Bobby Carter was out trying out my mechanic, and he he builds our cars at this time in life. And they got screwed up and missed a corner and rolled a beautiful little El Camino over. Here comes Bob in the yard. He said, I wrecked your truck. We got to do something. Tomorrow's a race. And I had just bought a brand new 1979 or 80 Chevrolet pickup short box. I think it had six miles on it. And I said, boys, I've got to do something, we'll race that. So I did. My wife said, you can't do that, we'll go broke. I said, if whatever I win, you can have. If, fortunately, I did get a second, and I won about a thousand bucks, so we bought her a car to it. And that's one of them happy ever after deals. But that was spooky. But here we were at four o'clock in the morning. She finally said, okay, you buy me a car. She needed one. She was teaching up there to school. And uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, she's out there with me in a nightgown putting roll bars and that, sissy bars and that uh, Chevrolet. And at 9 o'clock that morning, we was at the starting line, and I got one up. Jack Flannery beat me. Jack. And there's another fantastic part of this whole country. Them's local people. They're in the Hall of Fame for racing. They're local, but they're in the Hall of Fame from off-road racing. And I happen to be one of them. I, I raced 25 years consecutively. A couple wins, but I was very proud to be a, asked to be a, a that's an emotional thing, but uh, anyway. <laughs> It's good to know that we have some heroes among us. And they're all volunteers. <laughs> when I think about that, it's great. For a community this far off in the boondocks, all of a sudden, just kind of like a Hollywood deal, it just explodes into fantastic. I shake more hands pat more backs and tell more lies in them two days than you could in a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure proud of Forest County. I'm proud of the people that's in it. And I'm proud of the, of the people that love it and I'm proud of the people that help it. And I ain't too happy with the ones that pick on us. But they're smart enough to keep their mouth shut. <laughs> but I'll never forget her up there and I had her night going on. We put them roll bars in that new Chevrolet pickup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she didn't give me even time to get dressed. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of, a lot of things going. But other, and see, when that first started, when a lot of people are lost, it's Wonderful to go around that track and everybody gets to see you. But imagine yourself racing. My daughter rode shotgun with me one time, and I had a, that very same pickup. We're going down a Johnson fire lane, 90 miles an hour, knowing that traffic all goes the same way. And my daughter said, Dad, Dad, somebody's trying to pass, and I'm going 90 on a fire lane. And that goddamn Bobby Carter passed me. He, we ended up first and second. And I don't remember who got third, R.J. Smith, but anyway, out of like 65 vehicles. You know, this was not no little tinker toy game. And us locals were controlling it. 